The stimulus to protect our skin and keep our skin young and healthy with melanin, which is the body's natural protection, is the light that hits the eye. So we put on sunglasses and we trick our brain and then the brain can't protect the skin and the rest of the body properly and we create more damage, increased risk of skin cancer, increased risk of sunburn, increased risk of wrinkles and all these things. What role does the sun or light play in cancer? Thank you for asking. So it's a really interesting question and one of the things I have to say first is that it doesn't seem that people consider how common cancer is today. Like for example, I'm, uh, I'm with people, all kinds of different people all the time, friends, family, celebrities, influencers, and there's a common conversation of like, this person got cancer, this person got cancer. Like it's just really, really shockingly common. The news is always talking about this. And we've, we've accepted cancer as something that's totally like normal and it's not. It is absolutely not normal and people I believe need to reject the idea that cancer is something that's normal. So as far as how light affects cancer, well, it's in one way it's simple, in other ways it can be complex, but light controls the function of our mitochondria, our cellular engines and mitochondria control the activity of autophagy, which is the repair of damaged cells, and apoptosis, which is killing cells when they're beyond repair. And the only time a cell can really become cancerous is when autophagy and especially apoptosis no longer function, because otherwise those cancer cells would either be repaired or taken out, unable to spread crazily. So by getting sunlight and improving the function of our mitochondria, which is what light does, our biology naturally prevents cancer. We can stay cancer free and you can see this in vitamin D levels. Above certain natural vitamin D levels, cancer is extremely rare, if not altogether non-existent. On the other hand, total deficiency of sunlight, among other things, toxins, allows a great environment for cancer to thrive. Mm. It's a powerful statement because when you think about, especially even think about colon cancer, a study I read a while ago talking about vitamin D levels directly correlated to cancer, colon cancer. And I was like, huh, equatorial. Yeah. I was like, the, the less sun that people are getting plays a major, major role. And it's not just vitamin D, it's just, as you were talking about, mitochondrial health. Yeah, and I'm so glad you say this. So vitamin D is a proxy for natural sunlight exposure. So someone who, I'm not familiar with uh, if there's a tremendous amount of studies on this particular subject, but I would imagine that someone who supplemented vitamin D wouldn't have the same results because they're just pumping it into their blood. It's actually been shown to be toxic. The primary ingredient, uh, cholecalciferol in vitamin D supplements, is apparently a primary ingredient in rat poison. I'm not sure why, but uh, people can think for themselves about that kind of thing. And so th the sun gives us so much more than vitamin D. It's giving us the release of nitric oxide in our cells, which va uh, vasodilates our blood vessels so blood can flow more freely, naturally lowers people's heart rates. And we see all these people with heart problems today while they're deficient in sunlight. You know, the sun, it stimulates our body's rhythm through our eye and our brain, which literally controls the timing of every single cell in the body, hundreds of trillions of reactions every single second. In fact, far more than that. It's a 50 to 100 trillion cells with 100,000 reactions per second. So, and that timing is primarily led by the sun. So it's, it's not just about vitamin D, but that is an easy test people can do if they're not supplementing to see their body's level of assimilation of light and yes, when we have a lot of light, we're gonna function better, generally speaking, and when we don't, our cells are gonna go pretty haywire. Which makes sense, right? And, and I love uh, the work that you do because you're not talking about eating dirt, you're talking about literally the sun, the, the, the very thing we evolved with. It stands to believe that we have a deeper connection and relationship with it, way more than we ever will know in science. Um, when you talk about the different inputs coming from the sun more than vitamin D, it makes sense that our body's like, oh, no, no, we need you to function. It's not like it's a choice like, oh, today I'll get some sun. It's like, no, I need to be getting sun every single day. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I'm going to ask you the question, doesn't the sun cause cancer? No. So it's, a, it's really interesting that that's come to be a common belief. So there was a study done out of Sweden with about 516 Swedish women over a 20 year period. So it started as a melanoma study and they had three groups, the women who intentionally took the most sun, the women who just had a moderate amount of sun exposure, and then the women who, it was all women, the women who avoided the sun the, intentionally. 
uh, after 20 years, the women who intentionally avoided sun had significantly more cancer, significantly, not just cancer, but an increased risk of death from all causes, so all cause mortality. It was something to the tune of double or triple increased risk of death from all diseases, whether it was colon cancer or Alzheimer's disease. And so that one study is a pretty large sample as well for that long of a study from an epidemiological perspective. It's very significant. And so uh, it came to my mind not long ago because I was at a store, a, a smoothie store, where they have all these books on the shelf. And one of the books was called Get the Bleep Out of the Sun uh, with the, the negative word. And I just want to draw attention to that simply because, and, and nothing against the author in them, but it's, it's spreading. It's a modern repackaging, just like, you know, some people like you and I are trying to take ancient wisdom and repackage it in a way that's cool and familiar. It's taking something that's, that's not true and repackaging it, trying to make it cool. And it, it really, uh, I posted a little bit on Instagram and then I kind of changed my, my, my tone because I realized I had reacted a little bit more than I needed to. However, the reason it bothered me is because there's a lot of susceptible young women and people of all kinds mm -hmm. who believe this uh, information from the beauty world and the dermatologist that the sun's gonna cause skin cancer, it's gonna make them age and get super wrinkled. And yes, if you constantly overexpose yourself to the sun, yeah, you can have that effect. However, it's a, it's a superficial thing in the most literal sense of the world, superficial me superficial meaning surface layer because you're focusing on trying to keep the surface layer of the the skin the body uh, in its like most pristine possible state by keeping out of the sun at the expense of the function of literally every single cell and organ system in the entire body. So it's sup it's the most superficial way of, of thinking. And I don't say that as a, as a sort of chastising these people, but just simply as a call to the awareness that this information is not sound. Mm -hmm. Which is really, really powerful statement. Because if you think of the consciousness of not only most people, but in medicine, we're saying, if you step out of your house, you better put on sunblock. But make sure you put it on your face. I mean, I can think of a doctor right now who's all over Instagram, who's every other day posting about sunblock. Make sure you cover every piece of skin with it. It is the best thing you can do for your health. I've had some words, <laughs> but regardless, when we put on sunblock, are we completely blocking all of the benefits from the sun? Uh, partially, partially. So yes and no, I would say. So you're not blocking all of the spectrum of light. Otherwise, you know, the only way to block all the light would be like covering yourself with black or something right. like that. What's happening is we're selectively cutting out ultraviolet, the higher energy wavelengths of light. And so this is, this is problematic for a few reasons. So starting with sunscreen, the first major issue is the chemical aspect of sunscreen. And so people put sunscreen on and then it disappears. Well, where did it go? It, it actually all absorbs into people's bloodstreams. And so these chemicals are, are toxic already. And last year there was a major recall of sunscreens containing benzene, a chemical that's found to be carcinogenic. It's one of many in sunscreen. Now, it's very well known to chemists and anyone who studies uh, physics and chemistry that anytime you expose substances to ultraviolet light that are unstable, because it's high energy light, ultraviolet, it knocks electrons off the orbitals of those of those substances, making them more unstable. And what that means when a substance is unstable, it's lacking electrons, it wants to steal electrons from something. Those are called free radicals. And those cause tremendous amount of cellular havoc. So you're literally putting on unstable chemicals that are already toxic in their, let's say, semi-stable form. They're being irradiated by ultraviolet light. They're becoming more unstable. They're turning into more toxic versions of themselves. They're absorbing into people's bloodstreams and they're causing huge cellular problems inside. So I would, I would go to the point that I believe sunscreen, sunblock is much more of a contributor to cancer than a pre preventer of cancer. Then when we look at the fact that since the message started to be preached that sunlight causes skin cancer, only more and more people have gotten skin cancer. Since the effort to eliminate sunlight from our lives, skin cancer rates, eye cancer rates, all, all sorts are, I should say, 
issues with the eyes as a result that they claim are the result of sunlight, such as cataracts and so on, these have skyrocketed since people began wearing more sunglasses and since people began wearing more sunblock. So yes, I would say of the benefits of sun, not only is it directly negative to put on sunscreen. Yes, it's blocking the benefits of the sun in a big way because you can't get the ultraviolet light. You can't make vitamin D. You're not getting the nitric oxide release. Uh, you don't put sunscreen on your eyes, so you can still get a circadian stimulus from the sun. And potentially, you could get benefits of near-infrared light and red and blue and green that aren't blocked. But it's not an overall good scene. Mm. If you are someone looking for a company with natural plant-based medicines and herbal remedies, then Anima Mundi is the answer. Anima Mundi was founded by Costa Rican herbalist Adriana Ayalas. It is a female BIPOC and Latinx family-owned and operated company. The products are made in an FDA-registered and CGMP-certified facility. They use eco-friendly packaging in recyclable glass and biodegradable bags. All products are made in the U.S. with certified organic herbs, wild and sustainably harvested plants, and a vegan and gluten-free environment, of course. Product contains zero fillers, binders, or flow agents, pure botanical powders, teas, and beyond. The apothecary has sustainably grown to contain over 200 different herbs around the world. Anima Mundi's project educates and supports true fair trade practices beyond organic farming, education, and small farmers to create remedies that benefit people from all walks of life. Right now, you can get 15% off of products at Anima Mundi Herbals with the code Heal Thyself 15. Again, that's 15% off of products with the code Heal Thyself 15. Hey everyone, I want to talk about Birch Living as a partner that I've been working with for quite a while, one of the OG partners here at the show. Sleep is so important to me, you know that. It's so important, I know you feel it. If you don't sleep well, your whole day can be ruined. At least mine is. So I'm always excited to talk about Birch on my show. It's a premium mattress in a box company and makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. They're organic, non-toxic mattresses made right here in the United States. And it was so important for me to choose a mattress that is made with organic, natural materials because I can sleep comfortably knowing I'm avoiding harmful off-gassing from manufacturing. Birch mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified, testing for over 10,000 volatile organic compounds that could be making you sick. I've had my Birch mattress for about eight months now. I love it. What I love most, it's breathable, keeps me cool at night. I'm not waking up sweaty. The pressure points are relieved because it's holding me like I'm on a cloud. It's allergen and mildew resistant and made from raw materials sourced straight from nature. With a Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried yet, you're gonna get three months to make sure you love it. If you don't, they're gonna come pick it up from you for a full refund. The best part is that Birch delivers a mattress right to your door, free within the United States. Comes rolled up in a box, super easy to set up yourself. I did it in a few minutes. I love my Birch mattress. I truly do think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash heal thyself and get $400 off of your mattress plus two free pillows. Thank you, Birch. We, we think about how many people have sunblock in their bag, right? Especially in the summer, they're pulling it out and applying it and reapplying it. And then when we go to the beach, we're lathering it on the whole time. It's interesting, I, I was reading a study a few years ago about uh, sunblock and then mixing with the chemicals in a pool, the chlorine, causing toxic byproducts for the people. And we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa that, that, that's a surprise. But it makes sense. It also makes sense, too. Um, so. I mean, it's a pretty bold statement to say that, but I'm behind you because I fully believe in that. So then how do we, quote unquote, protect ourselves from the sun? Because you had mentioned being in the sun too much can cause the superficial damage. What about the people who are like, I don't want to get wrinkles, I don't want to get sunspots. Is there a way to find a balance to protect our outer layer as well? Yeah, absolutely, certainly. So uh, this is going to get really interesting here. So, <laughs> uh, so first of all, I have a comparison to make. So we can think about oxygen. So oxygen is one of the most volatile, unstable, aggressive chemicals in all nature. And it was not until certain bacteria came along that 
evolved that were able to utilize oxygen that it became something that life could benefit from as opposed to something that was very antagonistic to the existence of stable compounds needed to have life. And so to ask how do we protect ourselves from sun just to flip the understanding of it, to me would be like asking how do we protect ourselves from oxygen. It's, it's very similar in, its, um, in the fundamental, that's how I see it. Now the reason, it's not a bad question. Uh, the answer to both questions is that our body does it for us. So we are protected from oxygen. We have cell membranes that are designed to protect us from the, you know, the oxidative damage caused by oxygen in the air. And in the same way, our cell membranes protect us from sunlight. We have mechanisms that regulate how much oxygen we breathe so it's not too much. So in the same way, we have mechanisms inbuilt into our body. This is probably the best analogy I've ever thought of. I can't believe this is coming right now, but it's perfect timing. So I've, I've never used this before. But as a matter of fact, our body has mechanisms to prevent ourself from getting too much sun. It's, it's just a feeling of overheating. Now the best way to ruin and short circuit these mechanisms is wearing sunglasses because the body loses its ability to sense the amount of light in the environment and people get burnt and they damage their skin. They also damage their eyes because the sunglasses block out ultraviolet light. So then they have a super high energy blue light that's still passing through, which is also damaging to the eyes, can cause cataracts and so on. And then they are, uh, the, the absence of that ultraviolet stimulus that causes the pupil to contract is what does that. It lets in too much of the high energy of the other colors. Additionally, the UVB light, there's a very clear research and studies to show that ultraviolet B light on our eye, on our retina, is the stimulus for the production of a hormone called alpha MSH or alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. And for lay people, that's the hormone that the brain produces that tells the whole body to start making more melanocytes, which are the cells that make melanin, which is the pigment that protects ourselves. That's again, stimulated by sunlight, the stuff they say is bad, UVB on the eye. And so the stimulus to protect our skin and keep our skin young and healthy with melanin, which is the body's natural protection, is the light that hits the eye. So we put on sunglasses and we trick our brain and then the brain can't protect the skin and the rest of the body properly and we create more damage, increased risk of skin cancer, increased risk of sunburn, increased risk of wrinkles and all these things. Melanin is an unbelievable molecule. It's been studied thoroughly and I've probably only scratched the surface of the research that's out there. It's like lifetimes of work for many different scientists who do nothing but study it. But to give kind of a surface level, what melanin does is it takes, it absorbs high energy light and then it turns it into basically near infrared light. So it turns high energy light, which is damaging, don't get me wrong, too much ultraviolet light is, can be damaging for sure. It turns it into really healing beneficial near infrared light, it heat essentially. Mm -hmm. And it it's makes the, the, let's say, less good stuff for us, the stuff if we get too much can be damaging and something really good. So as far as how to protect ourselves, the first is just don't do the things that override our body's natural protection mechanism. So don't wear sunglasses. If you're out in a place where it's overly bright and you feel like you need to put sunglasses on, okay, you can, but your skin should be covered too and not with sunblock because we've already established it's toxic. It should be covered with clothing. Like any cloth, uh, you know, darker will reflect more sun or will prevent it. Like white lets more light through. Like a light cotton, like I wear only white for a few reasons, because it's simple and I don't have to think about what I'm gonna wear, but also white light cotton lets more light through. So even if I have to walk around and have a shirt on. So that's one, would be just don't do the things that harm our body's natural protection uh, in, in the realm of sunglasses. Secondly, another really important thing to do to protect from sun would be listen to your body's heat exposure. So in other words, or your temperature. So if you're in the sun, you get really hot, definitely get out. You know, if you're burning, get out. That's another thing like burning when I mean, hot. Another really, uh, there's a few other really important things we can do. So getting morning and afternoon sunlight, which is more of the infrared and the warmer colors. That's why they say like golden hour, you look really good because it's more of the reds and the oranges. And near infrared, there's actually evidence to show that it sort of preconditions our skin to be prepared to absorb and handle the light in the middle of the day. And it makes sense if you think biologically in nature, any human who lived in nature outdoors, the sun comes up and they're getting that light, especially in the summer when it's hot. They're getting that light and it's setting their brain and body in motion. And every organ system, and the skin's the largest organ in the body, takes time 
an energy to get going. And so when we get that morning light, it's giving the energy and, and time for the skin to prepare itself. The skin also has to get going and then it's prepared later in the day for midday sun and it can handle it. So many people, what they'll do is they'll just go and be inside all morning like we do. They drink a lot of alcohol, which is another thing not to do. They'll sleep in late, they'll wake up and they'll go cook themselves in the sun. That's a no-go. Uh, other things people can do, of course, is eat a really healthy diet. So like eat healthy foods, natural foods, avoid like refined processed seed oils, of course, because these get into our cell membranes, cause problems. And then the last thing to do, I would say, and my absolute favorite is the, the this is a great question for you. So are you familiar with what is keeping the earth from being completely incinerated in a flash second from all the power that's coming off the sun? The ozone layer. It's the ozone, but it's also the magnetic field of the Earth primarily because the, the sun has these flares, and when they hit the top of the magnetic field where it's weaker, they cause the northern lights and the aurora borealis. Now, so this, that's a magnetic field that's actually preventing the solar flares from just scorching the Earth and, and keeping things functioning. So our body also has a field. In fact, our field has a body would be a better way of putting it. I've come to believe that the field is who we are, the energy field, and I'd love to get into this. But so by strengthening our field, which means not putting all of our energy and attention on negative emotions and stressors, because then our field shrinks, our focus goes down, and we're producing hormones of stress from all that energy. We're using that energy to make these hormones of stress. By not doing that, and by basically choosing to be a happier person, we strengthen our field and our bodies actually, if you can imagine, more protected from the light of the sun. Man, it's you like gave us things. the lowdown. That is like, that. I hope everyone who's listening or viewing took notes on that because those are so simple. You're literally asking us to wake up in the morning, get some sun, protect ourselves, don't wear sunglasses, cover ourselves if we need to, and be happy. You know, like, <laughs> they, like eat healthy food and be happy. Oh, like, what a surprise, right? Um, and, and that benefits so much more, but it's like how powerful that information is. And it's interesting to go back to Melon, and I was reading a few years ago about migratory birds who, who are on long, long migrations, apparently use melanin as a source of energy for mm -hmm. themselves, which is crazy. Like, they're, they're just like, I'm not going to eat today. I'm just going to use melanin. Um, so there was, I know that there, that's when the research was getting really hot, so I haven't looked back lately, but I'm sure that it's on fire right now. Mm, yeah. But um, yeah, thanks for that information, because it's so important. It, it's, and it resonates with me. I stopped wearing sunglasses a long time ago, except if it goes in my outfit. If it goes in my outfit, then I'm going to wear it. <laughs> but functionally, I don't wear it. I always, I always told people, I'm like, no, the sun's going to hit my eyes. And it's for a reason, right? And, and, and thinking about the things you said, it's like it tricks the body. The sunblock tricks the body. The sunglasses trick the body, right? There's signals that we need to experience. So the body goes, up, oh, too much sun, too much sun, too much sun, too much sun, up, oh, done. You know, start overheating, start feeling uncomfortable, go inside. Um, and, and to think that, like, something we think is protecting us is doing the opposite. Powerful. All right, so I want to bring up this part. Uh, a lot of people ask me, they're like, hey, Dr. G, uh, I don't have much time to get out in the morning. Um, and then in midday, I'm in the office and I can't move. I have a beautiful window in my office, though. Does that count when the sun is beaming on and I feel it's hot? My, my skin is getting hot. Does that count? Yeah, no, it doesn't. So basically, the sun in its pure form, you know, filtered through our atmosphere, of course, that's what we've evolved with. And that's what we call the full spectrum of sunlight, meaning it has the full rainbow. And so, you know, we're in California, people buy full spectrum CBD, things like that. It has like all the stuff you want. Now that's not my personal thing, but for some it might be, but the sun, it, it's, it's similar, let's say. And so when we have windows, now the oldest windows were actually better, like the oldest forms of glass. They still block some of the ultraviolet and some of the infrared part of the light, but they let through a good amount there are certain plastics and certain other materials that are not really commercially available, although we're working on that, that do let through more of a full spectrum of light. But in general, modern windows block out significant portions of the spectrum of light. And so people know the rainbow, as I mentioned, as per my garment that I'm wearing here that earlier on, Christian nicely pointed out, it has all the colors, red through violet, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Well, the two other colors that are in the sun's spectrum that we can't see are 
infrared and ultraviolet. So infrared is before the red and ultraviolet is after. And these are the only colors we don't see for vision. Now, it's interesting, they do so many things in our body that I've heard some really smart researchers posit that the reason we don't see them is because it would confuse our system if the things that are controlling, they're kind of like the main levers for controlling biology. If we saw them, we would constantly have a, a crazy flow of uh, colors that would impair our ability to function. And so it's actually, Ben said, there's a guy who painted uh, the haystacks. I'm forgetting his name, but a really famous artist who painted haystacks. And he was sort of, I think he was said is crazy, but the haystacks had all these colors. And this particular expert I was following actually theorized that it was because he had, with the issues he had with his health, he actually saw ultraviolet and it made that some normal object would look like super trippy in its uh. colors. And so, and, and to be more specific, ultraviolet light, and one of the other ways, you know, just going back to the earlier point, one of the other ways that ultraviolet is, we can understand it's not causing skin cancer, which is what they say, these, these dermatologists and doctors and so on, is that there's clear evidence showing that how our cells communicate and in fact, for example, something as foundational to life as the stimulus for cell division, mitosis, is pulses of extreme low frequency ultraviolet light. That's shortened to ELF, ultra or UV light. And so our cells literally are communicating with this ultraviolet light. They're, it's called biophotons. It's actually light that our cells produce. So they're actually our cells actually generate ultraviolet light. And if ultraviolet light was so bad for us and so carcinogenic, why would it be so intimately intertwined with such a foundational process as the very birthing and expansion of life itself? The whole model that the dermatologists uh, are building on is, is a, it's a very precarious foundation. So when it comes to windows, now, because of various things, especially energy efficiency today, windows today are designed to block out a lot of the infrared because it's heat. Infrared is heat. And so for air conditioning, you need more air conditioning and use more energy mm -hmm. if you got more heat coming in. So they block out infrared and they say, we're going to save this amount of energy. Now, save energy has to sort of be defined. Like, so, okay, they're, we're going to utilize less electricity to cool and keep the building at a reasonable temperature. But saving energy is a bit of, it's a bit inaccurate because biologically, and we're the conscious observers of our world and we're creating our reality and we're the ones, we're the ones who are affected by all these things and we're the ones who are trying to make the world a better place that we could inhabit in the future, right? And in doing these things to try to save energy, quote unquote, as they say, is we're actually directly depriving ourselves of near infrared light, which is the most important energy source for our, our cells to function properly and generate energy. So in the name of saving energy, we're actually killing life. And I may add th that the energy costs of hospitalization and all of the, not to mention the pain and suffering due to the death and disease cause, including all the cancer today, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune diseases, uh, anxiety, depression, mental illness, which we see on display now in our country in a very sad recent s series of events. Um, that, beyond the energy savings, is that really worth it? I don't think so. And I think anyone who's, who's thinking clearly would also think it's not worth it. But it's just that we don't know. It's just the information hasn't been brought out. And it's because it's probably, probably because it's not a pharmaceutical drug that stands to make millions of dollars. It's just sunlight. You know, it's just the light. And like, sure, I, of course, I sell these glasses to protect people from harmful light, but I don't, I don't necessarily have anything to like, m you know, make a profit off sunlight, right? Yeah, yeah, makes so much sense, man. And the way you framed it and just thinking about uh, the paradox between energy saving and losing ourselves in that, in our own energy production, something that's really powerful is thinking how UV is inherent in our own biological processes. Mm -hmm. The most like sacred creation of a new cell. And, uh, and we're supposed to protect ourselves from that. Crazy. It's like saying like, protect yourself from water. You're made of water, but protect yourself from water. Element, spelled L-M-N-T, is a tasty electrolyte drink with everything you need and nothing you don't. This means it's got a lot of salt and no sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium to 200 milligrams of potassium to 60 milligrams of magnesium. Contains none of the junk, no sugar, no artificial coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. Element 
is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to your lifestyle, whether it's keto, low carb, paleo, or vegan. It's super important to replenish your electrolytes, whether you just finished working out, you did the sauna, you took a long walk and it's the middle of a summer day, it doesn't matter. You need to be replenishing your electrolytes always, especially if you're active. Electrolytes facilitate hundreds of functions in the body, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormone regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. So Element can help prevent and eliminate things like headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte that's lost is sodium, and athletes can lose up to seven grams. And when it's not replaced, it's oftentimes you can experience things like muscle cramps and fatigue. Now everyone needs to replenish their electrolytes, not just athletes. I personally have felt so much better since implementing Element into my routine, especially on the days that I'm doing sauna. It's helped limit headaches and fatigue overall. Right now, Element is offering you, the Heal Thyself listener, a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors, see which one you like, and then make that order. You can share it with a friend or keep them all to yourself. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash heal thyself. The deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash drg. Element offers no questions asked refunds. Try it totally risk-free. If you don't like it, they're gonna give you your money back. No questions asked, ain't none to lose. Hey, we often hear that the average adult should get seven to nine hours of sleep each night. And that's not always possible right? Especially living in the world that we do. A lot of us are waking up, we have kids. A lot of us are waking up, we have a lot of projects. But more and more people are forced to make lifestyle changes to get deeper sleep. The good news is, is that research has shown that quality matters just as much as quantity. But what exactly is deep sleep and how do we achieve this? First half of the night is your deep sleep window when things start to drop, like your heart rate, like your breathing, like your blood pressure, your muscle activity, your body temperature. Since that temperature drop is so crucial, it's a crucial aspect to deep sleep. Finding ways to activate that sleep switch can help increase your levels of deep sleep. This is where one of my favorite products that I have in my home is the Chili Sleep that comes in. They make customizable, climate-controlled sleep solutions that help improve your entire well-being. Chili Sleep makes the new Doc Pro, so when I have, the Uller and Cube Sleep Systems, they're hydro-powered, temperature-controlled mattress toppers that fit over your existing mattress to provide ideal sleep temperature. These luxury mattress pads keep your bed at a perfect temperature for deep sleep, whether you sleep hot or you run cold. These sleep systems are designed to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and give you the confidence and energy to power through your day. Imagine waking up and not feeling tired Well, chilly sleep does make that happen. For an extra layer of comfort, they also make the chilly blanket, the only weighted blanket that can also be paired with a control unit for the ultimate sweat-free sleep. One thing that I love about Chili Sleep, all their systems can be put on airplane mode so you're not exposed to dirty electricity during the night. And also they test for PFAS, that forever chemical. We made sure they tested and it came back clean so you're not gonna be exposed to those chemicals at night. So head over to chilisleep.com slash DRG to learn more and save 30% off the purchase of any new sleep system. This offer is available exclusively for Heal Thyself listeners and only for a limited time. Again, that's chili, C-H-I-L-I, sleep.com slash DRG to take advantage of our exclusive discount and wake up refreshed every single day. Man, you deserve it. What about then uh, uh, a sun a sun bed, like a tanning bed? That's UV light though. Yeah, absolutely. So there's definitely varying opinions on this. I'm of the opinion that it's okay to use sun beds if used responsibly, meaning very short doses, uh, you know, even regularly, but very intelligently using short doses. And I could catch a lot of heat for saying that, but it's okay because, for example, I work with some of the leading light researchers in the world, one of whom I'm working with to develop some really amazing products that are gonna complement our, in, in the way that our glasses are sort of a protection device. Mm -hmm. We're gonna create devices that are actually sort of supplemental, but from a light perspective. Uh, and so, you know, these experts oftentimes consult with and work with these ultraviolet companies to make their products safer, right? And so there are huge benefits to be had from these kinds of things, but I always recommend people to get out in the sun because it's a superior source. You know, like if you ask me what about red light therapy, I'd say it's great 
and it's only a piece of the spectrum and you're still gonna be deficient if you don't get full spectrum daylight. In the same way, if you just get UVA from these tanning beds, you're going to be deficient in the rest of the spectrum if it's all you do. Now, interesting side note, there's a great book called Health and Light for anyone who wants to have like a super rudimentary, fun exposition of, or expose, I should say, of the impact of light on health. Health and Light by Dr. John Ott. And it's really great. Now, just to give a summary, Dr. John Ott was a time-lapse photographer for Walt Disney. And meaning people are familiar with time lapse. You take a shot, you wait, you take a shot, you wait, and you stitch them together, and you can make something that happened over a longer period of time occur really quickly. Our phones have time lapse, of course, for sunsets and so on. Now, Walt Disney tasked Dr. Ott with making flowers dance, which was pretty cool. So he actually made flowers dance by increasing the moisture content in the air, which would cause the flowers to stand up and then to decrease it, and they would wilt. And so he would have them up and down and up and down, and then he would move the light, like the lights overhead, and they would move left and right mm. and left and right. And so he made them dance. He made flowers dance. And it's actually in, I believe, a Walt Disney movie to this day called um, Secrets or Miracles of Nature, something like this. But anyway, Ott, being a curious guy, started seeing that certain exposure to light, especially overnight, would affect things as simple as like the morning glory that opens in the morning. It wouldn't open anymore with exposure to light at night. And he started asking all these questions and testing everything with light on all these plants. And then he thought, well, everything I see has a huge effect. So why don't I look at animals? And then eventually when it was a little easier to do human studies, he also looked at humans. He looked at, at classes of children and where it was fluorescent lights all on, window blinds shut, no yeah. natural light, versus windows open, no fluorescent lights, and the classes of the kids under the fluorescent lights, and this is like, I wanna say the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, they just observed significantly more hyperactivity in the children. That long ago, just within the context. So one of the things that's interesting is light. I think people might consider, oh, I do, like with many things for health, we're told you do this, you do this, you do this. And over time, eventually you'll see an effect. And I think it's really interesting to consider, to bring it to the present moment, that the effects are immediate. They actually immediately affect our physiological functioning. So that's the reason I share this whole story of, of John Ott and his book is because regarding ultraviolet and tanning beds and so on, he, one of his anecdotes, the things he observed, was there was one restaurant, he lived in Chicago, and down it was down in the basement, and the whole place was lit up with UVA black light bulbs. So everyone's familiar with black light mm -hmm. party bulbs. You wear white, you shine out, you stick out. And so those are emitting a small amount of UVA and not enough that as I understand, they're considered super harmful by dermatologists, but I'm sure you could find some who say, even stay away from UVA. Anyway, so black light, this, this, uh, this restaurant, he observed that the waiters never had a sick day. He actually had asked the management like, hey, because he was studying light and he, he thought there might be an effect of having UVA lights, which they rarely do in restaurants. He asked the management, is there anything you notice? And the manager said, we've never had anyone call out sick ever. And it's been like, we've been in operation 20 or 30 years. And, you know, it's just an anecdote, but based on his understanding and his research on the many things that ultraviolet light could do to improve cellular function, it seemed like kind of clear that that wasn't a coincidence. It was because that they always had this UVA light in an otherwise indoor environment. Super powerful, because then you think about the other side, we have fluorescent light everywhere. All the offices that we go into, most of the time, at, at what level do you think fluorescent light is really affecting us? I would say, it's such a great way to put the question, I would say at the deepest level, the deepest level possible, because you know, if we ask, well, if we talk about levels, let's say, you go down, 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 now how far can you go down? Well, you have, you know, you have the whole body, and then you have organs, and then you have tissues, uh, and then you have, you know, cells, and within the cells you have organelles, and within the organelles and everything you have, you go down as far to biomolecules, then molecules, then atoms. Atoms have, to a deeper level, subatomic particles. And then they break those down and they understand, wait a minute, and this was Einstein's famous E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm. It's all just energy. It's literally matter and energy are just two different frequencies on the same continuation. Matter, we could say, is like really slowed down and condensed light. And that's sort of the premise that allowed for things like the atomic bomb to be created. So given that we are energy at the most fundamental levels and light interacts with what we call matter or slowed down light, 
differently than it does just plain old light, but it literally is affecting us at the f deepest cellular level. Now, that's not maybe necessarily the angle you were going for with the question, but it's affecting the way our cells function. And I love what you said earlier that there, because I say this often, that it's very likely that the sun affects our body in ways that science will never be capable of understanding. But given such a massive, massive amount of data showing that the sun is good for us and that artificial lights are de detrimental for our health and you know specific colors of light have huge impacts, it seems to be clear that the safe and intelligent bet with a lot of support behind it is to be in the sun more and that will function better like that. Now that doesn't mean, and you asked earlier for people who, who only have a certain amount of time and they're behind windows, you know, they only have a certain amount of time to get outside. It doesn't mean we need to be outside all the time, but it would be really prudent. One of the researchers I work with, uh, who's been a top leader in the light world for decades in light therapy, says like minimum two hours per day of unfiltered sunlight exposure. Doesn't mean you have to be shirtless, but on your eyes. I also found this fascinating. Some 98, 99% of all the light that enters our body, the electromagnetic light, like sunlight and blue light and so on, maybe we'll keep that separate from the conversation of spiritual light, but electromagnetic light, it's through the eye. 98 to 99% comes through our eyes. And it's interesting, it seems, wow, that seems like a lot because we also have so much more skin. But the skin at its core is ultimately blocking a lot more light than it's letting in. You know, even though we have mechanisms, another interesting thought, why is it that when we go in the sun and we get UV light, it causes our blood vessels to vasodilate and it causes what's called dermal pooling, meaning all of the blood pools to the surface as if like a flower springing toward the light. That's exactly what our blood does when we go in the sun. Why would our body literally produce chemicals to bring all the blood to the surface of our skin as if to receive the light if the sun was so bad for us? Food for thought. So anyhow, um, I'm not sure even where I was before that, but we were clearly designed to be getting light. Mm -hmm. And you know, for those folks who can't get out, it's, it's important to make a point. Oh, we were talking about 99, you know, light, light coming through our, our eye is like a, it's black box radiator is one term that's used in physics for it. It's like a perfect, because it's black, it's absorbing all the light. So that, that's how so much of the light comes in, even though the pupil is tiny, tiny. So much light is coming in. And actually, I love to use the analogy of like a phone charger. You plug that phone into the charger and it's sucking in juice from the outlet. When we're out the outdoors in natural daylight, our body is literally just taking in juice, power, energy from the sun. And it's a, it's a really beautiful thing. It, it, it affects our hormones, neurotransmitters. It affects really everything. Man, I mean, look, I feel your passion, but it is so legit because you're not coming here talking about your passion for origami. You're talking about your passion for something that is like omnipresent for all of us. And when you talk truth, and I'm a firm believer when you talk truth, uh, there's a part of all people, whether or not they're super closed up and restricted, that kind of tingles on the inside. They're like, shit, man, I think I think that guy's got a point. He's a little bit crazy, but I think he's got a point, <laughs> right? Amen. I, yeah. I mean, people have seen me like that. All They see me all the time. But uh, it's so real. Like, <laughs> just to think about the importance of being in the sun in two hours a day, like minimum. When we hear that in the working society, in the modern culture, we're like, two hours a day, I can't do that. How am I gonna do that? I mean, I have so many other things to do. I have to answer emails. How can I be outside for an hour? How, what is an easy way to start integrating life and sun together? Yeah, absolutely. So I have this protocol that I've sort of put together called the light diet. Now we're not gonna necessarily go through the whole thing. We, we may just by happenstance here, but the, the core steps for people would be morning sunlight, midday sun, and evening sun. If they wanna have the main effect of light. If they had to just get only a total of an hour, if you couldn't get two hours, I would recommend going out for between 15 to 20 minutes at sunrise, uh, 15 to 20 minutes in the middle of the day, and 15 to 20 minutes around sunset. And the sunrise and sunset set our body's rhythm. If you could only get one, I would pick sunrise because it kind of turns us on and wakes us up and gets everything going. Now the midday sun has a lot more of the ultraviolet and that's when we can make things like vitamin D and get the benefit of nitric oxide and a lot of other things through our eyes and skin. So midday sun is important for a whole different set of reasons than morning and evening sun, but all three create a nice trifecta. Now the best thing to do would be for people to 
you know, get out if they can. For example, if you have to work inside, I'll do this even if it's if I'm in a place where it's really cold, which I'm often avoiding the cold, but sometimes I love the cold. But I'll go out every one to two hours for at least 10 to 15 minutes. So if it's two hours, I'll go out probably 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But if it's one hour, I'll probably go out five to 10 minutes and just keep getting that as part of my routine, having that as part of the routine because it allows me to function at a higher level. It allows me to maintain the benefits of the light. And it's such a part of my life now. You said, for example, I got to answer emails. Well, a great thing people can do is answer their emails outside. Mm -hmm. Or simple things people can do is really great, open a window. Just open the window so the screen isn't blocking the full spectrum, but the window glass itself is. Mm. I would also just recommend people see how you can change your life because it's it's such an important thing to have full spectrum sunlight for our body to function at its highest level, especially in this modern world where we're so often bombarded by not full spectrum light, artificial light, like LEDs, fluorescents, and screens, that it makes the sun that much more important for us. So people, I believe, ought to make a point in their life to understand that this is in many ways the giver of life energy. It's gonna make them feel, it's not like one of those things where it's like, oh, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't do that, because you'll get some benefit way down the road. I've had people turn to me and say, dude, since I started watching morning sunlight, like it changed my life. Like yeah. I feel amazing. And sometimes, because for me it was gradual, but because I was learning it and I was starting to integrate it slowly. Some people, they take what I share and they go all in and they, it changes their life. And they'll do things like they'll wear our glasses, especially at night to protect their body's rhythm and they'll sleep much better. And it's, it's a really great thing to start integrating into your life. So, you know, there's, there's more I could say and, and I think we'll, we'll get there. But you have a book called The Light Diet? I actually don't yet, no. Okay, um, we're waiting on that. Yeah, I know, it's coming. So I've decided that I've been busy working on my business and focusing on that because there's a great, a great quote from the savant, the really intelligent uh, architect and uh, engineer, Buckminster Fuller. He said, if you want to give people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. That'll never work. He says give them a tool, the use of which leads to new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I understood that in a way that's why the universe slash God kind of gave me this business because I'm creating tools the, right now, the light protection eyewear, that people can feel the effects of how mm -hmm. light affects their physiology. And then naturally they say, all right, I want to get in the sun because I know it's going to affect me. I am working on some shorter form versions of the light diet. I have a video course that's a video course with a PDF guide that's available on my website, rawoptics.com, but I'm going to redo it entirely and just turn it into a really simple, some PDFs, maybe an ebook, and then cool. potentially a book full of cool. One of my top favorite magnesiums out there in the game, one of the two actually that I use, is Mellow Magnesium. It's amazing, I use it right before bed. I use the purple one, you, you'll see that one's made for sleep. Put it into a cup of water, mix it up. It's effervescent, I take a drink, and then I start my sleep rituals. I turn down the lights, I close my eyes for a little, meditate, do some light stretching, maybe take a bath. But Mellow Magnesium really sets off my sleep rituals. It's a powerful daily magnesium supplement and it has amino acid and trace minerals. Taking magnesium every single day, especially the Mellow Powder, helps propel memory, mood, brain function, stress response, nerve and muscle health, and sleep. With Ned's Mellow Magnesium, I'm experiencing better, deeper sleep and waking up feeling rejuvenated. Adding this as part of my nighttime rituals was a game changer. It's helping me feel really well rested so I can wake up and do the things that I need to do every single day and keep going and going and going. Ned's products are amazing. They're full of premium CBD and full spectrum of active cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, and trichomes. Ned's full spectrum hemp oil nourishes the body's endocannabinoid system to offer functional support for stress, sleep, inflammation, just overall balance. Ned CBD is cold extracted from the world's purest USDA certified organic hemp in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, clean stuff. Ned is a fully transparent company. They share all the third-party lab reports. Go to their website, check it out. You can access all of them, who farms their products and their extraction methods right there on the website. Become the best version of yourself. You're gonna get 15% off of Ned's products with the code DRG. Go to helloned.com slash DRG. Enter the code DRG at checkout. Again, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash DRG. Thank you, Ned, for sponsoring the show and offering our listeners a natural remedy to some of life's most common health issues. Thank you, thank you, Ned.
to, to go back on to getting the sun, one thing I, I do myself is anytime I have a call, 15-minute call, 20-minute call, I walk around the block. I walk around the block, I walk around the block, I come back inside. And then like an hour later, an hour and a half later, another one, I go around the block, I go around the block. So then I make sure, I do a morning walk too. I try to get the sun set, that, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes I just crash from work or I'm just like, I can't, I'm tired, I'm gonna just relax. But it's really, really helpful. Just getting creative and figuring out how to do that. Um, I know you're really passionate about us being light beings and I don't wanna close this without talking about. What does it mean and what's your connection to, aside from the sun as a life giver of light, what about us as light beings? How do we, you mentioned earlier, how do we expand our light selves? Yeah, so for me, uh, many years I was, uh, I had learned all this really great information about light and how it affects our physiology. And having been in the world of food and diets the years before that, I, I struggled a lot with just foods and and really, I, I believed that I believed what I read, and so I believed that food was the majority of the things we need to be doing for health. And so I would get on these super strict diets that really ultimately led me to hurt my own relationship with myself. I was it was a very sort of negative cycle, and I think a lot of people have been there with food. So when I learned about light, and that light is sort of more foundational to our physiology, not sort of, it is as a matter of fact to how our physiology functions because it, it affects how our biology ut utilizes food and all food ultimately is light broken down at its core. It's just sort of crystallized light that we break apart and free that light energy and use it for power. So it's really all about light. And yet after implementing a lot of these things we've just spoken about, I was still finding myself struggling pretty tremendously. And you know, I was still uh, I have my business and I was sharing the message about the light and getting the sun and it it helped me and it was helping others, but yet I was still having this internal struggle, like something's not right, this theory can't be complete, there's gotta be something missing. And I just thought after I started to put more pieces together and remember the spiritual things I had read years ago from people like Ram Das, and then starting to look in the work of people like Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's a great teacher and friend now today, but uh, someone changing many lives. And then I started looking as a result of that into Paramahansa Yogananda, this Indian monk who came to the States and founded the Self-Realization Fellowship and taught of the unity between Hinduism and Christianity and uh, definite scientific techniques of meditation to realize God. I just started to understand like, this is the thing I'm missing. It's inner light. It's, it's cultivating the light that is who we are and that we could go out in the sun and get a bunch of energy and bring it into our biology. But the awareness right now that, you know, is speaking to you, me, and, and it's your awareness that's listening to me, I've come to sort of understand it as, as it's energy, really. You know, they talk, people talk about the soul, the spirit. It's it's not material in the sense that we think about matter. It's something that's energetic, and and in a way, we could use the term light to sort of understand it, even if it's even a let's say a different kind of vibration, a different kind of energy from the light we see. Anyhow, so it just became clear the focus has to be on the inner light, and if we don't have that component, as I was struggling with tremendously we have nothing. We could take in all the light in the world, all the sunlight, and, and still continue to struggle. So for me, my goal and my mission has become to align myself as, as closely and directly as possible with uh, the energy force that governs all life. You know, Dr. Joe Dispenza will refer to it as the quantum field in his teachings to be very scientific from a quantum physics perspective. Uh, other people refer to it just as the universe. You know, you could call it God. That's what people have called this force for ages, the force that kind of, the, the very force that physicists, all scientists are seeking for the same thing. It's, it's not necessarily something we can comprehend, but all physics is now at a place where it's trying to converge on a unifying theory that underlies everything. And the ancient yogis and saints, they didn't necessarily have the equations and the science worked out, but many of them, according to testimony from many saints and uh, of both of Christianity and of Hindu and other religions, you know, Islam and all sorts of religions, there were these people who just connected to something far greater and they came back a lot of the time to tell the tale. And to me, it became so inspiring to realize that there is some 
force that is within us and all around us all the time that is doing nothing but willing our existence and loving us into life, literally. Like it is, it is the force that keeps our heart beating. It is a force. And people can call it whatever they want and they can personify it like certain religions do or not personify it and call it the quantum field, whatever they want. But there's something there. And I started to realize that there are these masters who have understood just in the same way that when you drop a ball and you do, you know, there's certain things we do and physics could perfectly measure the rate of acceleration and when it's gonna hit the ground and you launch a rocket ship like Elon Musk does all day long. There's certain things Newtonian classical standard physics could predict. But one of the things that no science has been able to help us with is how to live a good life. And that became the question for me is like, I just want to live a good life. I have this business, I have money coming in, I have the freedom to do whatever I want. And I understood that money doesn't bring happiness. Personally, I vis it's one thing to think the cliche, yeah, like yeah, yeah. people say money won't make you happy, but to feel it, to really feel like money isn't making me happy and I'm, I'm making more than I could have asked for as a 19 year old, this was like three years ago, four years ago, I just, I started to realize there's gotta be, I just want to live a good life and how do I do that? And people like, whether it's Jesus Christ or people like Bhagavan Krishna in Hinduism or, you know, all sorts of saints have, have understood in human life things that are conducive to the expansion of life and the growth of life and things that are antagonistic to successful life. Like, you know, to not get into too much detail, but for example, I was, uh, I was raised in a divorced family and I intimately felt how a human is, is raised of uh, masculine and feminine, a positive and a negative energy that makes them whole. There are studies that show that if an infant separated from its parents long enough, they could actually die. The studies where the infants have actually died in these studies. And so people can look this up. And so in, in an opposite way, we need that positive and negative yin yang, masculine and feminine energy to build a whole healthy human. And so parents being divorced, it's like the very foundation of your life is split and it creates, we could call it like broken people, people who go into the world like, you know, they look normal, but groping around like lost and so much misery and depression and sadness comes out of that. And so I started to understand like, wow, maybe all these teachings from these, what people now consider old school and nonsensical, maybe there's actually a scientific basis for that. And the science is beginning to catch up actually to a lot of this ancient wisdom. Ooh, man, and, and I'd love to see that it's unfolding so fast. I mean, and you mentioned Joe Dispenza pushing a lot of that, making it more culturally relevant, right? It's like, oh, this guy's hip to it, you know? And now we have like influencers who want to do the meditation program. I was like, cool. You know, like uh, this is ancient stuff, but you know, here we go again. Um, what, a, and what an honor it is to see your growth. I mean, I, I don't see you as a 19 year old kid. I met it three years ago. I see you more in your power, and it's beautiful to to witness that, right? And in, in, in human beings uh, overall, but to know that, yeah, you're bringing a product that's so important. You're preaching a part of the earth that we need to be a part of, but also you're radiating that light, and that is the most important part because now people want to really listen because you are embodying that, and that's it. Like if you embody it, then people will always be attracted and listen and open their hearts, and that's what you're achieving, man. So. Thank An honor so to have much, you brother. here, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I would leave I would leave a message that's a very powerful phrase or verse that I've I've been told. And this is something from the Christian Bible. But for those who aren't Christian, just take the words. And I wasn't raised Christian either. I've just started to find truth and it rings, like you said. And it's the message is to you know, it, it's that you're a being of light and it's to go let your light shine so that people around you can see that you are shining and that whatever that force is that's, that's willing us all into life can also see that. And when we, you just know when you're aligned with that force, people just, you just feel it. You're like, I, something's right, right? And you know when you're not. And so it's a beautiful thing. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here and share these messages with you. Thank Bro, you. And you're radiating as well, brother. What an honor, man. Two radiant beings just doing their thing in the middle of a Friday. I love this. Hey, how do people find you? And again, what's the company? Yeah, the company is Raw Optics. And I got so, those glasses, by the way. Yeah, I yeah. wear them all the time. You see me with glasses on my stories? It's the Raw Optic ones. Go on, Thank sorry. you, brother. We're going to hook you up with some. We have some new really cool styles coming out that you I need like. the new so swag, 
me. Yeah, I need we'll the get newest you, we'll get you. The, the, I was, you, I had you in mind. So, so that's raw optics. That's R A optics, like Ra, the Egyptian god of sunlight. People can listen to our last episode for more info on that. But rawoptics.com, R A no W. And if people want to follow me and the company on Instagram, that's raw underscore optics for the company and the light diet for me. And follow me because. I will be having this PDF guide, an ebook, something like that to summarize the light diet protocols. And if you want more detail, you can get it there. This is a really great place to start, but there people can go for Fantastic, more detail. Fantastic, brother, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. All the love to you. I, uh, maybe in another year, one calendar year, you're back here and we're I talking about that. more. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, brother. All right. <laughs>